hand carving a Santa Claus figure. Wood carving can be both a skill and an art form. Learning how to carve wood by hand requires various techniques and tools to turn a blank piece of wood into a finished carved piece. By using traditional carving tools, namely chisels and knives, along with finishing techniques like sanding and painting, a handmade wood carving is a candidate for becoming a treasured heirloom. Some power tools may be helpful, but the basics of learning how to handle a chisel and carve into wood safely all start with the same premise of deciding what wood to remove and what wood to keep. With a little patience and a lot of practice, a wood carver will be able to adapt a number of basic wood carving techniques to create unique pieces to keep, give as gifts, and maybe even sell. In order to create a hand carved Santa Claus, which could easily be made into a wizard figure if you wanted something less seasonal, we will need wood, tools, and paint. As a side note, sometimes wood carving is referred to as whittling. I think of whittling as using a single blade, even a jackknife to cut and strip pieces of wood off a block or branch. Whittling can be seen as a form of folk art, and it can also serve as a pastime when folks are sitting around chatting. Carving generally involves additional chisels and more planning for the finished product. Because these terms are occasionally interchanged, reference books about both whittling and wood carving may be helpful, such as those sold by Schiffer Publishers that include wonderful illustrations, tips, and great designs for carvers. Let's start with the basic tools needed to carve. If you do not already have hand chisels, there are many options online and in stores. So I chose to look at the woodcraft.com site and found many great tools for beginning and experienced woodcarvers. As with any new hobby, it is exciting to look at all the beautiful supplies and want all the best, but a basic whittling knife and a set of chisels that includes at least one gouge and one V chisel are really all you need to start. I recommend a set like Ramelson or like FlexCut, which I will be using, well made but not the most expensive. A whittling knife is also needed and should be a decent quality, such as one made by Butts or Murphy, as I have. Knowing how to sharpen tools is an additional skill, and because the knives and chisels will eventually become dull, every carver should have a sharpening stone and learn how to use it properly. I suggest looking at the manufacturer's site or on YouTube for sharpening instructions for your brand of chisels. As far as choosing the right wood to carve, I prefer white pine, but basswood is also a good choice for beginner carvers. These are both soft woods and allow for clean, smooth cuts. Blanks can be purchased at hobby stores, home stores, and hardware suppliers, as well as online. Also, local lumber yards may have wood appropriate for carving, and it may be worth a visit to learn about local wood and availability, especially if you develop a greater interest in carving. Here we are going to start with a piece of pine that is eight inches tall and two and three quarters inches long by two and a half inches wide. Any size piece of wood is fine. Additionally, we will be using a pencil, possibly a piece of sandpaper and painting supplies. As a final step to finish the carving and give it an old world look, we will seal it with a coat of light colored stain. Any sort of paint can be used, but I am using Alkid paints purchased from Dick Blick's online catalog because these are oil based yet quick drying paints that leave a soft and crisp finish. These paints require paint thinner or mineral spirits for cleanup. I suggest using a round number eight brush to apply the basic paint colors as well as a number one size liner brush for the details. As a final step, I seal carvings with a finished coat of stain. I have been happy with results of Minwax Puritan Pine because it seals the carving and accentuates the details without making the whole piece too dark. Once all the supplies are gathered, we must consider a few safety points. First and foremost, the carver must keep in mind that the chisels and knives are sharp and can easily cut the skin. Always cut and carve away from the body. In my demonstration, you may see me carving towards myself, but I have been carving for quite a long time. Special gloves and thumb protectors are available for carvers who hold their pieces in one hand while carving, but these do not always guarantee there will not be cuts. Keep some band-aids handy just in case. If using power tools, it is imperative to pay attention at all times and keep fingers out of the way of blades and moving parts. And if a chisel were to fall from the workbench or out of your hand, let it drop to the ground. Trying to catch a falling chisel could result in a painful slice across a finger or hand. When painting and cleaning, it is a good idea to work in a well-ventilated space and follow manufacturer's directions. Now it is time to sketch the basic shape onto the wood. 
Because we are working on a three-dimensional piece, it is important to consider all sides when drawing the form on the wood. Use a smooth cut side at the bottom edge, which will allow the piece to stand on its own, and keep the bottom the widest when sketching, forming a triangular shape when looking at the front of the block. From the sides, the top should curve back and the nose should protrude. If you have access to a bandsaw, you can rough cut the shape. Otherwise, it is time to start removing the wood up to the sketched lines with a knife. Cut into the wood and slice away from your hand and body. A vise or a workbench can come in handy to hold pieces still while working on a carving. Once the basic shape is formed, draw on the face and outline the clothing. Plus, indicate where the arms and any other details are going to be. I continuously turn the piece, working not in one spot for too long to be sure to not take away too much wood in one area. Use the V-chisel to cut in details around the face and the beard. Use a gouge or the C-shaped chisel to remove larger areas of wood. When the gouge is held at a steeper angle, a cupped texture remains, which is good near the arms and around the hood. Use a knife to round hard edges and clean the V-cuts as needed. After the whole figure is carved, look at it from all sides to be sure it appears balanced and ready to finish. If the face or cloak has more texture than desired, use sandpaper to lightly smooth those areas. Remember, this is a wood carving, so it is good to have some chisel marks and not sand them all away. If a piece of wood gets chipped off the piece, and if it cannot easily be repaired by carving deeper, wood can be fixed with glue. When ready to paint, apply skin colors first, then the areas of solid colors with the round bristle brush. Let paint set up for an hour or two, or overnight if time allows, because you will most likely want to hold the carving in your hand while painting the smaller details. Paint in the beard and eyes, and then consider the rest of the details. The piece can have as few or as many painted decorations as desired. It is always a good idea to sign and date your creations, and this can be on the carving or on the bottom. Allow the painted piece to sit and dry for a day or two, then apply a thin coat of stain to the entire carving with an inexpensive, long bristled brush, and then with a lint-free cloth, gently wipe most of the stain off, leaving stain in the carved grooves and a thin coat for overall protection and coloring. Let the project dry in a warm space and after 24 hours or so, it will be ready to be handled and put on display. There are really only a few basic points to understand how to turn a piece of wood into a wonderful wood carving. And with practice and determination, maybe a few different tools and supplies, a wood carver can create all sorts of fabulous works of various sizes and complexities.